come on behalf of our leadership, myself, Pastor McKay, thank you so much for, for coming. I'll start the presentation by being Dr. McKay, and then we'll end off with Pastor McKay, and you can vote on your way out. <laughs> it's better. But thank you so much for coming. Um, it started off with, we usually have our Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study, and um, we have a chance where, where we offer uh, our people to mention different prayer requests, and someone asked about um, the coronavirus, that we need to start praying about it. And then on last week, uh, one of the leaders on our chat put a, a lovely dashboard that gives an indication of how many infections are happening around the world. And I mentioned there that, you know, maybe we should just do, do a meeting um, around the coronavirus, especially after, you know, when it was announced that the first case was in South, Af uh, South Africa, my phone was ringing off the hook. I mean, in the middle of patients, where, doctor, where can I get masks? Doctor, I'm coughing. Doctor, I can't breathe. Is it corona? Is it corona? So there's a lot of, lot of questions around it, and I trust and pray that I'll be able to help you tonight um, to answer some of your, your questions and also to, to deal with some of your fears. Having said that, let me just start by saying I don't know everything about coronavirus. The good news is that neither do you, neither does anybody know yet. It's such a new disease. It's evolving so rapidly, and some of the things I say tonight may be even outdated or prove incorrect tomorrow. So keep watching the space. And having said that, I do feel that we as a church, and myself especially as a medical doctor, I feel that we owe you the truth, the honest scientific truth and the facts as we know it up until right now. As you've seen, the presentation will be in two parts, first the medical part and then the spiritual. In between, I will offer you a chance to ask some questions. That's why we've handed out a slip of paper. So if you do have a question, there are pencils in the pews. Just write on your questions. You can give it to one of the men, and I'll try and answer it if I haven't answered it during the course of the presentation. And then after that, as I said, I'll wrap up the, the presentation. So with that, um, maybe are we ready to start? So it's really about clarifying some of the confusion around, um, around coronavirus. Now, we are recording this, so don't worry about the slides. Just try and follow the discussion. Um, it will be available on most media, social media platforms uh, in the next day or so. Hopefully it won't be too outdated by then, but uh, you'll be able to get it. So just rather listen and uh, make some notes if you want to, and let's get, a, get an idea of what we are dealing with. Now, look at my first slide. It can harm people's health and weaken entire societies. Thanks to modern technology, it can spread rapidly around the world and there is no effective vaccine. What am I talking about? Not corona. <laughs> and that's really why we're here tonight, isn't it? Fear and a strong unpleasant feeling caused by being aware of danger or expecting something displeasing to happen. And we all know we are all on that verge of expecting something to happen. It's getting closer and closer. Just the other day there was one case, then two, then three. I mean, I made my slide this morning saying we have, uh, how many, seven cases, and now suddenly we're 13. The slide is outdated. So, and look at this, what this professor said. The fear of the virus may actually spread faster than the virus itself. And I think that's a good place to start. So, how do we cope with this fear surrounding uh, um, coronavirus or COVID-19? 19, as we call it, coronavirus infectious disease of 2019. Number one, I'm going to say it now, and I'm going to say it again at the end. Get off Facebook. Well, actually, those who are not here should be streaming live. It is being streamed live. But please, even today, there's this, there was a, a thing in so early I got on WhatsApp. A Japanese doctor says, keep your mouth moist. And if you drink water, you swallow the virus. It goes into your stomach. And you know, your lovely gastric acid just dissolves the virus. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish, okay? This is a nonsense that we are facing and you're being exposed to. And what's the first thing you do? Repost, book, like, save, edit, send, right? Please pay attention to the science. Pay attention to the scientists. Stop reposting, retweeting, and stick to facts. Just because it comes up on, on your WhatsApp status or your WhatsApp chat group doesn't mean it's true and then stay informed, okay? And this is what a lovely virus looks like. It, it resembles a crown, that's why you talk about corona. 
Coronaviruses have been around for a long, long time. It's a zoonotic illness. In other words, they usually cross over from animals into human species, exactly like HIV, exactly like SARS. You remember SARS? Not the one that you owe money to. <laughs> Severe acute respiratory syndrome, and then MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which was a few years ago. And this one, we believe, also happened to, there's the animal host, probably by means of a bat. So it's a new disease in China, 2019, the Wuhan province, you know. Right? It's a zoonotic disease, which means it crossed over from animals into humans, right? And the bat was the, probably the, 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 the host, but it happened all at the seafood market in, in China. And it soon became apparent that now we have human to human spread and transmission. And now we are sitting on the verge of a global pandemic or epidemic. Now, just looking at the first few hundred cases that we saw. The median age of the patients was 59. Who's 59 You're in trouble? <laughs> no, that's not how science works. No, and some of us, are, some of you are not even 59, you're even lying in the church. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was the first group of people. Nowadays, this, as the studies are coming through now, as we are able to study bigger groups, it looks like it's a little younger. But it definitely tends towards middle age and a little older. More males have been affected with coronavirus Interestingly, there were no cases in children under 15. It does seem to have some sort of protection, protective benefit with kids. In fact, in the data, there were no deaths in kids, in young kids, and I'll show you a slide about that now. Now, this is very, very important. The case fatality rate is approximately 2%. So if 100 people get coronavirus, two will die. It's about 2.3%. It may drop a little. So this means it's a deadly disease. When I compare it to influenza, I'll show you the difference. This is also an important statistic. It has a basic reproduction, reproduction number, R0, of 2.2. Now that means for every one person who is infected, that person will probably give it to 2.2 people. Okay, two, I don't know who's the point two of a person. Two people. And that's why you can see from one person in South Africa, and what alarms me is that each of those, instead of going straight home and locking themselves up in the pantry or wherever, they have exposed themselves to at least 20 people each. Now you think of 13, con 13 confirmed cases and each of them have already been in contact with over 20 people. And it has a reproduction number of 2.2. We are in trouble. Okay, so as of this morning, that's the time I was doing the slide, quarter to five this morning, it's 119,000 confirmed in about 119, about 120 countries. That's the amount of deaths. But most people are recovering. So recovered means they're fully healed, they're over, the others are still in recovery. Okay, so remember that, all right? It is a lot of people, but there are also a lot of people recovering. And of course, this is, you can see it's worldwide. It's soon, the, the message just came through now from the head of, uh, of um, WHO, we are on the verge of declaring this a pandemic. Once it's called a pandemic, that means it's global. The whole world, all right? That's already you can see all. And I told you this morning it was seven cases, and now another six or 13. And you can see 21 contacts, 15 direct contacts, 15 contacts. We are in trouble. Okay? And yeah, there's our headline. This was this morning already. Six more cases. Now, how does it spread? This, this is what you've been reading about. We need to make absolutely sure that we're all on the same page in terms of how COVID-19 spreads. It's by droplet spread. All right, it's not airborne, it's in the drops. You know when you cough and you see, you literally see that flame or that spit going, it's there. You have to bob and weave and duck, right? <laughs> so when someone coughs or exhales, they release droplets of infected fluid. And that fluid is either, either if you're close enough, you can inhale it, or most of the time it lands on nearby surfaces, desks and tables, right? And hymn books, <laughs> chorus books, right? And remember, the virus is very versatile. This may change in the next few days as more data comes through, but we know that it can survive on surfaces for a few hours, even up to several days. So that person could be long gone, and you come along and touch that door handle or that lift button. Ish, yeah, yeah, right? And then what's the problem after that? You take your hand and you touch your face. 
Now I'd like to see, can we sit this presentation through without going to your face? Just try that. It's well nigh impossible, right? And so people catch it by touching these contaminated surfaces or objects and then touching their eyes or especially their nose and their mouth. And you inhale that droplet. And then, and then of course the other way of getting it is standing within one meter of a person. So besides buying hand sanitizer, you should all be buying a tape measure. <laughs> so, so bra, stand, wait, just wait, one meter, one meter. Yeah. Right. Don't come closer. Yeah, one meter. That's called social. These diseases introduce new, new terminology. Social distancing. Right? Social distancing. You social, but from a distance. See? Don't, don't, don't come near me. All right? One meter, three feet for those who don't know about meters. You can catch it by breathing in those droplets. Or by, this is the most, one of the most important slides. That's how you get it. Okay? Now, it may not project well, but let me explain quickly. Just, because now you're going to say, so what are the symptoms? So you've now inhaled from something. The first thing is fever. You do not have coronavirus if you're not running a temperature. And you're not running a temperature because you put your hand here. <laughs> and you still say, doctor, you know, it's not so bad here, but my legs, you. <laughs> Besides buying hand sanitizer, buy a thermometer a good digital thermometer. Don't buy a rectal thermometer and not know where to put it, all right? <laughs> buy anyone you put here or in your mouth, okay? So the, the most common presentation, if you do not have a fever, you probably do not have COVID-19, okay? Then there's a dry cough, fatigue, very important. Now, if you look at that, many, many other infections can have that. A cold can have it, a uh, influenza can have it. I'm gonna mention about influenza. But the cardinal thing about uh, COVID-19 that no other illness has with this first three is shortness of breath. So in other words, if you have a fever and you're coughing and you're feeling out of it, you're not feeling too well, but you're also having short of it, you, 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 you're breathing heavily. That's a very, very important clue that you may have. And that is what develops into pneumonia, and that is why it can be fatal. Okay, and then you get all the, the headaches, the joint pain, sore throat, chills, many, many of the other things. But most commonly, fever, dry cough, and fatigue. Very important. Okay, again, not suggesting that well, but I'll explain. Most patients who become infected with coronavirus, this big blue block here, 81%, will have mild illness. Remember I showed you how many have actually recovered. So just because we may think that you have corona, we may suspect it, you may think it, it does not mean you are going to die. Okay? So beware of that panic and unnecessary. Take it seriously, but 81% of us are actually going to survive it. A small percentage, about 14%, may go on to develop, especially those with the shortness of breath, more severe illness, and may have to be admitted. 5% become very critical. And of those, 2.3 die. And that's why I get that case fatality rate. Two out of every 100 people who are infected with corona can possibly pass away. But most will be mild and most will recover. Are you happy? That's good news, isn't it? Most. Now I'm going to tell you who are the ones who are up here. Those who have cardiovascular disease. If you have high blood pressure, you see why we shout to make sure your high blood is not high? Because you say, you, Doctor, I know when my high blood is high. You don't know. All right? Cardiovascular disease. You have a heart attack or a stroke. High blood pressure. 10% of those who develop coronavirus died. Right? If they were diabetic, 7% died. Chronic respiratory disease, smokers, chronic bronchitis, emphysema died. Hypertension there, cancer. If you have no health condition, if you're fairly well and contract corona, there's less than 1% chance of you passing away from the... The, the complications of coronavirus, okay? So this is why we say it's older and more sickly with chronic illnesses that are more at risk of getting the severe complications. And here's the age breakdown. 80 plus, who is 80 plus, okay? So 80 plus, 40, almost 15% of those who contracted coronavirus and were more than 80, 80 years and over, they passed away. And you can see the younger you are, I'm about somewhere up here, 20 to <laughs> 0.2, right? And you can see, 0 to 9 years, there were no deaths. 
That's why we say it seems that it's not a disease that targets kids. Okay. Right, so when should you worry? Now this slide is very important. It's not projecting it well because I, I use another font. I'm so sorry. When should you worry? So number one, you must have symptoms. You can't come and start worrying if you don't run and have a fever or symptoms of an upper respiratory tract, okay? So it's cough, uh, headache, fever. Fever is the key, all right? And then, number two. So remember, it's that plus and. You must have been in contact with somebody, a confirmed or highly suspected case of COVID-19. Someone who broke your one meter rule, okay? So it's fever plus having, or you have traveled somewhere to a place that has COVID-19, as these 10, uh, these 10 folk who came back from Italy, all right? Or you were exposed to patients in a hospital setting or in a ward where they were being treated for COVID-19. Are you with me? So it's that plus one of these here. It's not just a fever. So if you have been living in Emmerdale, okay, that's, that's not nice, eh? that's not nice, you shouldn't laugh, okay? But if you've been living and you have not been anywhere, you haven't been to Clearwater more, okay? You haven't been anywhere and nobody has visited you and you have all the symptoms of coronavirus, it cannot be coronavirus. Can I get an amen? amen. You cannot have coronavirus, okay? So this is, this is what the NICD, our National Institute of Communicable Disease, puts out. So anyone who has those symptoms and 14 days prior to that was in close contact with somebody, or a history of travel, or you were in a ward, a hospital clinic environment where someone had it, then you are now regarded as a PUI, a person, not DUI, not driving under the influence, a person under investigation. Right? And those, those we put on a mask and we shove you off to the lab and we isolate you. Are you with me? So it must be, this is very, very important. So save yourself money, save yourself time, stop rushing off to doctors and to the labs. I want to test, I want to test, I want to test, okay? You have to fulfill, they will not test you unless you fulfill these criteria, very important. And this is what now we have to know now. If you, if you say yes to that, then we must put you here, then you must go through all that and you're lucky, still alive, otherwise, because Undertakers is somewhere here. I'm just joking. <laughs> what happens next? Then we send you off for a test, a swab, all right? And then if you're positive, we admit you to hospital for isolation, okay? And then we must come to you, who are you with? Who have you been with? So you must identify and trace all your contacts. Right? And then all those contacts now must self-quarantine. Now the difference between isolation, quarantine, isolation, sick people. Right? Quarantine, you're not yet sick, but you could have been exposed to someone who was exposed. So you must go home and be all by your lonesome self. Okay? With, you can have your phone with you. You can have your, you can have, uh, um, I was going to say, but you can't have unhealthy food. You must have nice, healthy salads and chicken there, eh? okay? And for 14 days, you have to be quarantined, okay? And then if you become symptomatic in that time, then we have to test. You see how the cycle repeats itself, okay? And so this is important at that point. This is why I say it's, the important thing is to have a thermometer because you have to check your temperature every day for that fever that may come. And this is where we are in South Africa now. Someone got, came back from a, uh, a, malaria area, a COVID area. They developed a sickness. They were exposed. They were tested. They're now in hospital. And all those contacts have to be traced. All right? And then those people have to then be quarantined. Can you see what a nightmare it can become? Can you see why companies may have to close? Why schools may have to close? All right? So if, if, any, if any of you, do any of you fulfill this criteria, let me stop right here. Please leave the book, leave my church now as a gift. Eh? You can't have Corona here, eh? Otherwise there's no tithes and offerings on Sunday. Okay. Are you all with me so far? Are you, are you getting an understanding? So what's the outcome? As I said, most, most patients have mild symptoms and therefore most of them make a Remar remarkable recovery. There's one of the 13 South Africans that are in trouble because they also have renal disease. 
And that's why there's complications now, okay? Some may experience more serious illness and then of course may remain, have to be ventilated, require oxygen. But the risk of serious illness ri rises with age and rises with what we call comorbid issues. If you have other diseases that go with it, the high blood pressure, diabetes, and ischemic heart disease, okay? So what can you do to protect yourself? Let's run through that quickly. Number one, clean your hands. Your hands must be clean because your hands are the way the virus gets to your mouth or to your nose, right? And then also when you're coughing or sneezing, sneeze into your sleeve. Now I've got nice sleeves here, so I must use a tissue. Now men, I a belief, men, men. Men love those hankies. You know those hankies that you put here and you just pop it out? And then you take out your hanky, and then you... And then you look. And you put it back. Please, you cannot be walking around with corona in your pocket. Hey, which hanky was it now? These are expensive. Please, go and buy these. All right? You're not going to say this brand. But, you get, but buy something and keep it in your pocket and have lots of them. So that if you don't want to sneeze or cough into your sleeve, into the tissue, and then what must you do? Discard the tissue. And then what must you do? Wash your hands. All right? And then social distancing, avoid one meter rule, those who have a fever and a cough. And you know, this goes for every viral illness. I don't know why we are, Corona has given us a good time to get back to basics. Because all these things that we are talking about should have been done all the time. We don't wash our hands. And you know where I see it, the worst. That engine garage in Bloemfontein when I stopped for Wimpy on my way to Cape Town. You go into the toilet, there's everyone there, and they come out. That guy goes straight from there in to sit into Wimpy. And he has not washed his hands. And then half of them want to greet me when they come out. Near me, all right? Wash your hands. And so, and so the other thing is, do you wash your hands properly? Now remember, if there is visible dirt on your hands, you need soap and running water. Okay? Don't expect poor dirt or hand sanitizer to take your dirt out. And how, how long must you wash your hands for? How many seconds? 20 seconds. All right, and there, right? And what must you be singing? Happy birthday. How many times? I did a talk the other night, and, I, and, and, and when I arrived, they were singing happy birthday, and I thought maybe they're showing you how to wash their hands. So I said, oh, but they weren't. So I said, whose birthday is it? And I said, I don't know. I think it's two years birthday. I said, two years, who's two years? He says, no, I don't know, but they sing happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's a stale joke, it's a stale joke. <clears throat> 20 seconds sing happy birthday, twice, okay? And you can see, there's the pictures. Otherwise, your hand is not clean. And then you must dry your hands thoroughly. Those, is it hair dryers? Air dryers are useless. You must use, that's why you must have this, because you must dry your hands yourself and throw away the tissue, okay? What about the mask? Everyone wants mask. You do not need a mask, okay? If you are well and healthy, the masks are to protect you from people who are sick. If you are healthy, you do not need a mask. The only thing a mask may do is protect you from touching your hand, okay? But please, you do not need a mask. We do not recommend that well people wear face masks to protect yourself, okay? They should be used by those who show symptoms, okay? And of course, for healthcare workers. Now, you guys are buying up all the masks, and we doctors now can't wear anything. <laughs> we don't have masks. So in terms of prevention, avoid close Context, social distancing, the one meter rule. Avoid touching your eyes, nose. Anyone touch their nose yet? It's hard, eh? Stay home when you are sick. 
Now I know for, for, for many of you, it's very easy to be away from work, any little thing. But we are so scared about our jobs, and I know this economic situation, but it's very, very important to stay home. Okay, and this is why this thing spread, because there are sick people coming to work, touching the coffee, going to the bathroom, not washing their hands, and leaving their germs all over the shop. And so we say, stay at home until you're better, add one more day, and then go. If your doctor doesn't want to book you off, come to me, I'll book you off. Even if you're on key care medical aid, I'll still, I'll book you off, okay? <laughs> clean, and this is very important, clean, frequently touched surfaces. And if you know someone's been there and they've been spluttering, you go to hand sanitizer or disinfectant and you make sure, if you're, you go near there, you make sure. Clean that photocopier, clean the phones, clean everything. And don't, don't worry if they're teasing you about being a health freak, you protect yourself. Because the next thing you do, you bring those germs home and then you're in trouble. Eh? 20 seconds, uh, happy birthday, and then make sure it's got at least 60% alcohol. Not the ones that we drink, Hand sanitizer, 60% eh? alcohol. Okay, so practical responses. Be aware of the news. You can't ask me, so doc, what's happening about corona? Don't be lazy, read the news yourself, okay? Protect yourself and others' common sense. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. Always, please, tissues and put the tissues in the bin. Wash your hands frequently, avoid close contact, Follow the national guidelines. You have to follow what's happening in South Africa. Very, very important. You may not like our health minister. You may not like what's happening in politics, but you need to know what's going on in terms of uh, uh, corona, all right? Um, do not touch your eyes, I've said, and then try to understand and support the science. Do not spread rumors. Do not be part of that, all right? Go look for facts. Now, just a few words about influenza. Very important, okay? Now, the symptoms, I can just run through. Flu, quick onset, you feel like a bus hit you. Headache, dry cough, sore throat, all right? High temperature, you are really ill. At three o'clock, you were still fine. At 10 past three, you felt something bad has happened to me. That's influenza. A cold, three things, cough, runny nose, sore throat. Not much else, mild headache, mild fever, but you're still okay, you even still want to go to work. Allergies, itch, sneeze, all right? Sneezy, sniffy, snotty, snorry, itchy eyes, itchy nose, watery nose, and then if you don't treat it with the nasal spray, you get congested. Now, coronavirus is very simple. Fever, fatigue, cough, right? Sneezing. But you get shortness of breath. A cold does not give you that, and influenza does not give you that. So just keep an eye on that, right? Shortness of breath. You're breathing heavily, you just take a few steps and you can't get your breath, that is, and, and you've been sick, that's a hallmark of something like COVID-19. To show you flu and COVID-19, this is how many people die. The death rate over 60, 6% 6 of them die. The younger, the better. The overall death rate, 2%, 2 out of 100 people, as the data that we know today, will die. Whereas flu, only 0.1%. So it's a very, very small percentage of people actually die from in influenza. But the numbers are a lot bigger, and this is what I'm going to show you now, okay? Coronavirus is deadly. We should not be making so many jokes about coronavirus. We need to take it seriously, okay? It is deadly. That's a high case fatality rate. Influenza, you see, over the, over the age of 65, only it's still under 1% compared to 6% there. However, if you look at this now, in this winter season that's coming, if you do not get your flu vaccine, and please do not ask me a question about the flu vaccine and say the last time you took it, you got so deathly ill. That is not from the flu vaccine, okay? But we are estimating that about 47,000 people are gonna get flu. Of that, half will need to be hospitalized. Of that, 11,800 will die. In South Africa, now worldwide from coronavirus, only 4,254 had died by this afternoon, worldwide. In South Africa alone, 11,000. So let's get some perspective about this illness. And what's the good news about influenza? We have a vaccine. COVID-19, we do not have a vaccine. We know so little about it. We can predict everything about influenza. How are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? How badly are you going to get it? And if you're going to die from it. And you can get a vaccine to prevent that. And of course, again, just like COVID-19, most of those deaths are among the elderly. Have you, have you written your questions? Because I can take your questions in a few moments. Eh?
with Sean and you can just collect the questions and then give it to me. So what's the bottom line? Repetition, repetition. I'm gonna say it over and over. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Avoid touching your eyes and nose. Avoid con close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick and clean and disinfect frequently touch, touch objects. And you know if you do this, you probably won't even get the cold. You won't, definitely won't get influenza if you put the flu vaccine there. And you most certainly will not get COVID-19 as well. So how are we going to stop it? That's the big question, how are we going to stop it? As of now, I don't know. And especially without a vaccine, it's going to be very, very difficult to stop it. So this is the time for facts. It's not the time to be spreading vicious rumors and t telling that the, you know, we're all going to die. It's the time for science, not rumors. It's the time for all of us to stand together and not to isolate. You know, if you, have, if you start stigmatizing and making all these jokes, people are not going to come forward to be tested. And you can imagine the chaos that will ensue from that. And so I'm sure you all agree, we are all in this together. We are just at the start of a new epidemic and we don't know where this is going to end, but we are going to be in lots of trouble. Okay? Right, so can I, can I do some questions quickly? And then we'll just we'll finish off. I'd like to be done before the lights go off. By the way, we do have a generator, eh? Don't, don't stress, we organize here. Yeah? We do have a generator. Just take up offering, we've got no diesel, so. <laughs> we've got no diesel, so we'll just take up an offering. When is the flu vaccine available? And uh, can kids get it? Good question, the flu vaccine is available. We're just waiting for our stock. Get it, the earlier you get it, the better the, your protection is. So we start saying from March already, it will be available. Make sure your doctor is giving you the Tetravac, which protects you against influenza A and B. We are expecting a very, very bad strain of influenza B. So if, it doesn't, if it's not the Tetravac vac, vaccine, you will not be protected. And it's, it's a virulent strain that we are expecting. Anyone can get from kids, from the age of six months. The dose is smaller. Anyone can get it. Even, don't even tell me about your egg allergy and this allergy, you can get it. If you're pregnant, touch of pregnancy, you can get it, okay? And it does not cause, it does not cause flu. It's impossible, it's a dead, inactive, it's a kill vaccine, we've killed it already, it cannot, it cannot uh, affect you. As you have to wash your hands now and then, what about people in rural areas who don't have water, hand sanitizer? That's for Mr. Mkise, eh? <laughs> How, good question, how long can you interact before you can interact with others after you've been infected? Good question. We're actually not too sure, but the, the cutoff is 14 days. So that 14 days is critical. There may still be a little bit of viral shedding, um, but usually after you have fully recovered, because we'll keep you there for at least 14 days, then you are um, non-infectious. But I would still say maintain a, a decent amount of social Social distancing. Don't start, uh, go straight to your boyfriend or your girlfriend's house. Could you, can you contact us twice? Very good question. We don't know. We don't know. But if you look at some of the data where some people got sick very quickly, you know we talk about the incubation period, which is the period from the time that you were exposed to someone up until the time you got sick. Some people got sick within five days. The incubation period is about 14 days. Some people got sick within five days. We think that it was because they got reinfected quickly. So you can probably get infected twice, right? Because we, there's, no, there's no vaccine to build up. Um, and my job is sales, visiting various doctors, including Dr. McKay. Aye, 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 please, eh? Please, how do I protect myself? How do, I'm asking you, how do I protect myself? You ask me, how do you protect yourself? Good question. Hands, don't touch anything. Doctors place are notorious for germs. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a breeding ground, okay? One meter rule, stay away from, especially some, we, some of the doctors are very bad and notorious for keeping reps waiting forever. And you have everyone spluttering. And please, if you are sick, and you, um, even with influenza or you sp suspecting corona, don't go sit in the, in the doctor's surgery, phone ahead, and we'll tell you, don't come. Don't come today, we're fully booked. <laughs> we, we, have, we, have, we have very, very strict criteria, protocols in place that if, you tell us that, we, that you suspect that you may have it, we will arrange for you to be isolated and make sure that you get tested without being a threat to anybody else, okay? So please don't walk into the surgeon and say, listen guys, I think I got corona, can I go to, can I go to the front of the queue? 
we'll put you out, eh? Incubation period, uh, 14 days, I said, eh? Traveling to Durban, oh, avoid, avoid Italian food, avoid any Italians. Again, remember, there are no specific rules for specific situations. It's general, okay? Hands, social distancing, okay? And the way you cough into it, all right? And don't come near any people. Can I go and collect my meds at, uh, at Helen Joseph if I have a spiritual problem? Same thing, don't touch anything. Be careful, that place is a, is a breeding ground for germs. Don't touch anything, keep your hands clean, go straight in, take your medication and straight, straight home. Asthmatic patients, anyone with chronic illnesses, especially respiratory, you at risk of not just getting it, but having it more severe. All the more reason to be careful. Okay, that's a question for the spiritual perspective. Good question. Could the Lord be showing us as a people that he has all things together and, and is in control of everything? Hallelujah. Is this a man-made virus? No. We didn't do it, people. We didn't do it. I told you it's been around for a long, long time. Okay? Initial symptoms, I've answered that. Does barrier cream help? No. Covering yourself using this as, as Nivea cream is not going to help. Okay, bathing in alcohol is not going to help. <laughs> Drinking alcohol is not going to help. We don't know the reason why, is the reason why kids are, uh, uh, we don't know yet why kids don't get it, eh? Should we not be using gloves instead of masks? What's the problem with gloves? You still going to? Okay. A four-strand vaccine is for the influenza that I mentioned already. Should we be hugging, kissing, hugging and kissing family and friends? Do so at your own risk. Eh? I can't tell you. Is it wise to travel? Definitely not. I'm supposed to be at a conference in Cape Town. In Cape Town. Well, maybe it's the news that the Cape Townian is coming. The conference is cancelled. Most companies have now stopped all international travel. Eh? It's not a good time to be traveling. What are the dangers of coronavirus in pregnancy? Good question. We don't know. We don't. It doesn't make it worse. Is it protective? We don't know. Uh, to, tra to travel within SA in the holiday period, uh, probably okay if you provided you to. The problem is being in big crowds. You see, so if you're traveling just you and your family, it's probably okay. Can I travel to the USA? No. I'm married to a Chinese. <laughs> And you can eat Chinese food, eh? You can eat Chinese food. What, what, if you are, what if you are HIV positive? No problem. Just make sure that you are on your antiretrovirals. Most patients who die from influenza are patients who are HIV positive. Okay? Just make sure that you are on, on treatment and you are... Remember, if you are HIV positive on treatment and your viral load is suppressed, you are probably more healthy than someone who is HIV negative. My wife is pregnant, six months, and working corporate. What should I do? Absolutely nothing. Hand sanitizer. Okay. And same thing, same thing. Okay, I've answered all those questions there. My 16-year-old will fly to Cape Town. Should I worry? Make sure he's loaded up with hand sanitizer. Okay. Physical symptoms I did give you. Uh, there is no place for immune boosters and vitamins and vitamin C, and probiotics, and antibiotics, and this biotic, any, there is no, it does nothing for Corona. And you don't have to boost your immune system. As Professor Harry Seftel would say, all you are doing is making expensive urine. <laughs> we can say this word in church, eh? it's urine. You're, making, you're just going to weird out. Eh? There is no evidence that any of these things do anything for coronavirus, or for influenza. Huh? Oh, doctor, I'm eating oranges. You're eating oranges till you're getting gout, and you're still getting flu. <laughs> Is the vaccine painful? No, it's not painful. Okay. Where in SA the current case is mostly in KZN, one in Gauteng now, and in uh, one Western Cape, eh? Are we done? If you have somebody that is diabetic, must they be tested? No. You can have any illness must be tested. You must fulfill those criteria. Fever, cough, shortness of breath, with positive exposure to someone who has the disease or having traveled somewhere. Let me claim that's enough now, that's enough. <laughs> and remember, 
Don't ask me anything after. If you ask me after the meeting, it's, it's not for free anymore. Eh? I have to travel to Kenya, cancel your trip. Eh? <laughs> when disposing of tissues, where do they get disposed? That's not your business. Put, put it in a bin and move away from the bin. Leave the bin alone. Don't stress. You can't, guys, you can't stress. Look, pick it up. It has not picked up our bin for a week. There's probably corona in there. Don't stress about that. We have enough to worry about. Eh? By when would there be an estimated cure for this disease? The Lord would have come by then. Eh? You can't cure these viruses. Hopefully we will have a vaccine in the not too distant future, but there is not going to be a cure. Can I wrap it up now? Let's get serious. A spiritual perspective. How should Christians respond? How should we be responding? Christians are notorious for responding badly to crises. Christians are notorious for forgetting who their God is. Christians are notorious for forgetting that God is in control of everything and that nothing ever hits our God by, mis by accident or by surprise. And so what I'd like to say is, where do we turn in the moment of crisis? We turn to the Word of God and the God of the Word. And so we have hope. You can see there are many questions that we can't answer. Coronavirus per se may not be in the Bible, but the Bible has all the answers that we need for any and every eventuality. And as much as I'm a medical doctor and I put my faith in medical science, ultimately, your faith and my faith we must put in our Lord God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in science, some trust in the wealth, some trust in money, some trust in your discovery, comprehensive medical aid. We ought to trust in the name of our Lord God. And so how are we going to respond? I think it's a good time for us as Christians to remember or reflect, but also to repent. What, what should we remember? We ought to remember that God is sovereign. Amen. That means God is in control of everything. That means there's nothing that happens to us by accident, by incident. God knows everything, including COVID-19. And because of who God is, COVID-19 is nothing for God to handle. For us, it's big. For the WHO, it's huge. For the world, it's a problem. But for God, it's not a problem. Okay? God knows best, and he knows what he's doing. And every time that God does something, especially that affects us, as Warren Weasby says, is always for our good and for God's glory. And so we may not understand the details of God's plan. We may not know why this is happening. We can probably give up many, many reasons why this is happening. I'm not going to go down that road. All I know is that God knows, and that's enough for me. The Bible affirms that God is our only hope. Yes, we hope for a vaccine. Yes, we may hope for a cure. Yes, we may hope for all sorts of things. But ultimately, God is my hope, and God never lets me down. Amen. So therefore, don't panic. Don't stress. You can stress about all sorts of things, Remember, I love this line, and I always say it. You may die in an accident, but you're never going to die by accident. With God, we are all immortal until God is done with us. No one dies before their time. And don't, I'm not saying try this at home. Don't go now walk across the N1 and say, let me see how immortal I am, because you may well get taken down. But when God is done with you, God will take you home or take or remove you from this. And so in the meantime, you must be careful. That doesn't mean you must be reckless. Okay, you must take precautions. Everything that I've said tonight, listen and take heed. Don't tell God, but keep trusting God. And keep on praying. Pray for a cure. Pray for those who are infected. Pray for our country. And keep singing. The saddest thing is to see a Christian who's lost their song. And keep reading your Bible. Stay focused and focus on God's Precious promises. Everything you need in Scripture. And Jesus is all you need. Even when you have nothing. If you have Jesus, you have everything you need. But it's also time to repent. There is no doubt, based on what the Bible says in the Gospels, especially in Luke, there is no doubt that we are living in the last days. The end draws nigh. And there is something more terrifying to come than COVID-19. If you think this is bad, 
is bad if you don't know Christ as your Savior. Because judgment day is coming. It's going to hit us suddenly. And unlike COVID-19, which only affects, as we say, mostly the elderly, and mostly those with comorbid conditions, when judgment day comes, every single one is affected. In every city, in every country in the world. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, when you have that judgment, there's only one destination, and that is a Christless eternity in hell. If you know Christ as your Savior, you will be with Him for eternity. The good news, there is a vaccine for your sin. His name is Jesus. Amen. And don't let this crisis of COVID-19 hit us without it being used as an opportunity to make right with God. To remember that all of us have finite lives. Whether it's going to be COVID-19, whether it's going to be a tragic accident like what happened with this lady who lost the three kids today, you never know. God knows. Don't take your life for granted. Don't take your health for granted. If you don't know Christ as Savior, if there's one thing that we need to learn from COVID-19, we are living in the last days. And if you haven't made right with God, it's a good time to make right with God. Our theme for our church for 2020 is it's time. And it's time to choose. And for those of you who don't know Christ, it's time to choose Him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you would like to chat to us after the service, you are most welcome to. But thank you so much for coming. Please don't leave without making right. I would have loved to invite you for coffee and cook sisters, but you know with Corona, I don't want you touching my, my cutlery and my crockery. But thank you very much for coming. Can we stand as we close? Uh, can we sing that hymn? No hymn books. Do you know the words? It is well with my soul. Just two stanzas. I didn't really move the hymn books to make, to make place. But I'm sure you know the words. The second stanza is my sin. But not my sin, but the words are my sin. All right? It is well with my soul. Let's sing it out. And if you know Christ as you say, you know that you can sing from the bottom of your heart. It is well with my soul.